Do you worry about your health? Do you worry about developing cancer, heart disease, dementia, rare illnesses? Health anxiety can be extremely challenging and upsetting for people, and it can limit a person's life and make their world a lot smaller. This is a continuation of our video series on skills and tools to manage health anxiety. And in the last few videos, we've been talking about how safety behaviors and things like reassurance seeking and checking and avoidance uh, not only maintain health anxiety, but make it more intense over time. And we've talked about how it's important to eliminate or reduce some of these checking and reassurance seeking behaviors. And we've talked about specific approaches that you can use to limit checking and reassurance seeking. And in order to truly overcome health anxiety, you need to face and confront your fears. Now, I understand this can seem scary and intimidating. These fears are usually something that people have had for a long time and they can feel overwhelming. Sometimes people suggest that the best way to deal with these fears is to tackle them head on, kind of like diving into the deep end of a swimming pool. This approach is something called flooding, where you expose yourself to your biggest fears all at once. If I'm afraid of a spider, I'm going to hold a tarantula in my hand. Now, while this method might work for some people, it's not ideal and definitely doesn't work for everyone. If you jump into the deep end of the swimming pool without knowing how to swim, this can be incredibly dangerous and not a great recipe for success. If you're not prepared, flooding can make you feel like you're drowning in anxiety, which can then reinforce and, and reinforce and worsen your fears, leaving you feeling even more anxious than before. And we call this sensitization. And this can make the health anxiety even stronger and harder to overcome in the future. So a much more effective and realistic approach is to take things step by step, kind of like climbing up a ladder. And this gradual process is something we call graded exposure or gradual exposure. Exposure that allows you to experience your fears in a controlled and gradual way. You see, what happens in health anxiety is that people often find themselves overestimating the likelihood that they have or will develop a serious health problem. For example, something like a minor headache gets misinterpreted as a sign of a brain tumor. A slight cough can be seen as early signs of a serious lung disease. These catastrophic thoughts are often accompanied by an underestimation of the person's ability to cope if these health problems were to actually happen. Now, when a person avoids situations that trigger the, these fears, they never give themselves the chance to see whether their fears are realistic. But by gradually exposing yourself to these fear situations, you start to gather evidence that allows you to evaluate and challenge these assumptions. For example, a person might avoid going to the doctor because they fear that the doctor is going to give them bad news. But by making a point to go to regular checkups, the person might actually discover that their health is better than they feared, or if there is an issue, it's entirely manageable. And over time, repeated exposure helps you develop a more realistic understanding of actual health risks and builds your confidence in your ability to handle issues related to health. And over time, a person begins to see that the likelihood of a serious health problem is often a lot lower than they ever imagined. And even if a health issue does arrive, or does arise, they can cope with it. So in terms of targets of exposure therapy and health anxiety, one of the keys is to get used to the physical sensations that trigger the health anxiety itself. One of the key challenges of health anxiety is an intense focus on body sensations. Minor changes in your body, like uh, increased heart rate after going up a flight of stairs or slight dizziness after standing up too quickly. These types of things can trigger significant anxiety. 
And that's because these sensations get misinterpreted as signs of a serious illness, leading to elevated fear and potentially panic. Now, through exposure, you repeatedly face these anxiety-provoking situations, allowing your body to get used to these physical sensations. And it's likely to feel really uncomfortable at first. So, for example, if, if you have health anxiety, exercise might make you really nervous because it increases your heart rate, and you might fear that you could that, that could be a sign of a health problem. But by gradually incorporating more physical activity and exercise into your daily routine and experiencing that elevated heart rate in a controlled way, you will learn that these sensations are normal and not harmful or dangerous. Over time, you start to become more tolerant of these sensations because they're more familiar due to the exposure. And these sensations that once caused a lot of distress, they start to feel a lot less scary. And this doesn't mean that the sensations go away, but rather you become a lot less reactive to them. Through exposure, you learn that anxiety, while maybe uncomfortable, isn't dangerous, and it's something that you can manage and you can deal with. Planning and then doing exposure is kind of like building a muscle. Each time you do an exposure and successfully face a feared situation, no matter how small, you gain a little bit more confidence in your ability to handle anxiety. And again, this isn't about diving headfirst into your biggest and most intense fear scenarios, but rather taking small, doable steps that gradually increase in difficulty. So for example, if you're terrified of going to the doctor, your first step might be something small like driving by the clinic or calling to ask about available appointment times without actually booking an appointment. And as you succeed with these smaller steps, your confidence builds and you feel like you can take on more challenging tasks like actually booking an appointment. Each success in the exposure process reinforces the sense that you can manage your anxiety and it doesn't have to control your life. And over time, these small victories, they begin to add up and they lead to significant improvement in your ability to manage health anxiety. And in future videos, we're going to be talking about how to identify targets for exposure and health anxiety and how to actually do graduated exposure to various health anxiety triggers. But in the meantime, if you're interested in learning more about the difference between therapeutic exposure and typical everyday exposures, I encourage you to check out this video. So that's all for today's video. As always, thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. And I will see you in the next one.